Hi everybody, it's John Pushkar from Prussian Technical Services, and it's another day of me trying to provide some tips to keep people alive. Today I want to tell you about a terrible tragedy that happened August 2nd, 2017, outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, at the Minnehaha Academy, which is a private school in a suburb of Minneapolis. Today's episode is going to tell you about how two people lost their lives because of this, a valve handle. They didn't get hit with it. No, it was much more subtle of a thing that took two lives and cost $30 million to restore. So sit back, relax, take good notes, because today you're going to learn a whole lot about never having this happen to you. Over the last 40 years, I've developed and led fuels and combustion equipment safety programs for the largest manufacturers in the world. Today, I'm bringing you knowledge, insights, and best practices about fired equipment and natural gas safety. Over the next few minutes, you'll get the kind of practical, real-life explanations that I've become known for. Two people killed, nine injured, and more than $30 million in property damage, all to a facility that had served the greater Minneapolis community for more than 100 years. How did it happen? Because a gas valve that was thought to be closed was actually in the open position. You see, the technician saw the handle that was intuitively what he thought would be in a closed position. The handle was perpendicular, it was 90 degrees to the pipe. What the technician didn't realize is that this handle could be removed and replaced into a number of different positions. This handle itself really had very little to do with whether or not the mechanism within the valve body would flow gas. There's other things I'm gonna point you towards to show you how you can tell if lubricated plug valves are in the open or closed position, regardless of the valve handle. You should never trust the valve handle. The project that was being done was actually to preventatively make the place safer. It was to move gas meters that were in the basement of the building up out of any space that could ever jeopardize anyone should they leak. One of the workers was in the basement, again thinking that the valve was closed, when he disassembled some of the piping. A maintenance worker for the academy was upstairs and said that he heard this horrendous rush of what seemed like air escaping. Then he experienced a horrible smell of gas. There were attempts to evacuate people from the building, but less than a minute later, the horrible explosion and fire occurred. So how about some lessons learned? Let's talk about how we could prevent this from ever happening to you at one of your facilities. Let's next take a look at manual isolation valve issues, and we'll be covering just a couple of the most popular types, again, primarily associated with fuel trains, fuel systems, and a little bit into the steam world. In the fuel train and fuel system world, you'll primarily encounter plug valves and ball valves. We're going to start off talking about plug valves. There's two primary types of plug valves. There's lubricated plug valves and non-lubricated plug valves. Non-lubricated plug valves typically have some type of resilient seal that actually mates with the plug and touches it. Lubricated plug valves has, have no such seal internally. They rely on a sealant that gets injected down through the top in what's called a button head fitting. This sealant material has to find its way around all of the surfaces of the plug, on top of the plug and under the plug, and I'll show you how that happens. There's actually an air gap between the plug and the body on lubricated plug valves, and it's only the sealant that makes the valve function as an isolation valve. I will tell you that Lubricated plug valves are probably 50% or more of fuel shutoff valves that you'll encounter in the field. 
One of the reasons is, is that they're infinitely serviceable and they're not impacted greatly by a little bit of dirt or crud in the system. You can continually add sealant and it's very difficult to have one of these fail unless the sealant hasn't been refreshed in quite some time. I will tell you that the two primary modes of failure that I've encountered in the field many, many times are that these valves leak when they're in the closed position, primarily because I've found a preponderance of people that own them don't understand that they require regular annual maintenance. The second mode of failure that's most popular is they seize in position and become very, very difficult to move if you can move them at all. Again, for the same reasons. Who says that these have to be regularly sealed? Well, the manufacturers of these valves give that kind of guidance and also some of the codes and standards like NFPA 86, the standard for ovens and furnaces, requires that the sealant in these valves be refreshed on an annual basis. If your facility does not own a sealant injection gun, I'm showing you one on the left hand side. If you're not familiar with this technology, uh, something you're seeing for the first time, chances are you're in that category of people who is not properly maintaining their lubricated plug valves. And please understand this is not grease. This is not axle grease for a car. That's why I'm careful to call it sealant. I never want to confuse people. There's specific types of sealant for specific valves and applications. It's a high pressure installation. You need to have a sealant injection gun. There's a number of different styles. I'm showing you one here on the left, but you want to make sure that whatever you have comes with some type of a gauge because it's only with this gauge that you would understand when the valve's accepting sealant properly and when you've installed all of the sealant that that valve could possibly accept. You don't want to be into a situation where you're installing sealant, it's bypassing the plug and filling the pipe. I'm showing you on the left this button head fitting and when they're sealed properly you can take a little screwdriver and push the little ball check down and you should have some sealant come out under pressure. I'm showing you on the right hand side how the sealant goes down through the button head fitting in the, the orange type color there. And there are grooves and channels meant to allow the sealant to flow to specific places in the plug and on the plug. That has to get under the plug, on top of the plug, and around the entire face of the plug. Here's a gentleman that's installing sealant and every few pumps of the handle he takes the plug and he rotates it to spread the sealant around the entire face of the plug. There's a YouTube video link that I've provided there. This provides great information for how to properly install sealant. It also provides methods to determine what's happening with the plug, which is very important to understand that you've done this job correctly. Again, sometimes these valves seize in position. Sometimes it's an external thing. On the left-hand side here, I'm showing you someone's painted over this valve probably for the last 20 years, and it's been in that open position for the last 20 years. I find that when this occurs, these valves need to be taken out of service. You need to find the closest upstream valve, uh, close that. You may have to purge the piping system using, of course, proper purging techniques, and you might need to replace that valve. In other cases, if it's because of internal seizing of the plug, there are solvents that you could buy to inject into the plug, and over time, like several days, and sometimes with a little external heat, not with a live flame, you can soften up that sealant, the solvent can do its work, and you can get them to move. Sometimes it's a corrosion issue. Sometimes it's a button head fitting issue. Button head fittings can be replaced for corrosion. Lots of penetrating oil and lots of patience can sometimes do the trick. 
A word of caution about plug valves and any valves that you have installed where the handles can be removed. Quite often they can be replaced in any position. So don't ever trust valve handle position as an indication of whether or not the valves open or closed. You can see on this plug valve style, and this feature is provided on many styles of valves, there's two raised bumps on the four corners of the square fitting there that's on top of the valve. And those two bumps are in alignment with the hole in the plug. So you can trust that, but you can't trust the handle position. Neither Prussian Technical Services Inc. or John R. Pushkar, the presenter and author of this work, warrant or represent expressly or by implication the correctness or accuracy of the content of the information presented. The user or viewer of this work accepts any legal liability or responsibility whatsoever for the consequences of its use and misuse. Hopefully you found something here of value that you can pass on to friends or co-workers. If you can, please hit the like button and share this video. And I'd also like to invite you to the Prussian Technical Services Online School, where you'll find more than 20 modules that I've created from knowledge I've acquired over the past 40 years, traveling over 3 million miles and being in and out of more than 300 industrial plants in 12 different countries. So once again, thank you very much for being here. It's my mission to pass on important life-saving information. I'll be releasing one of these videos just about every week. And if you could subscribe in the link below, I'll make sure that you get first notice of every time a new video comes out. Once again, thank you and please have a safe day.